After Dr. Rex's death, the identity of the capitalist behind the operations of the zombie virus research facilities, Douglas Jacob, was revealed. Dr. Soy, the head of the Aegis Institute, and Jennifer, an Aegis Institute agent, set out to track him down. To evade capture, Douglas Jacob began to eliminate people close to the situation. While working undercover in the Asian Red Army, Ji Yun Choi of the Intelligence Bureau discovers that Douglas Jacob is behind the zombie attacks. However, she is quickly exposed and forced to escape, only to be captured and imprisoned by Ritsuka and Mr. X. Meanwhile, the head of the Intelligence Bureau became suspicious of Ji Yun Choi's continued disregard for their orders and sent Mei to look into her whereabouts. They discovered that Ji Yun Choi, whom they thought had betrayed them, had discovered the forces behind the attacks. Mei finally rescues Ji Yun Choi from imprisonment. Mr. X steps in to stop them, only to be overpowered by Mei. The two escape the facility with information about Kronos, the organization behind the attacks. However, Douglas Jacob, unaware of the information leaked by Ji Yun Choi, was preparing a tie-up loose lens in order to hide his identity. Before the Vanguard company's virus leak, Victor was transporting the corpse of Phobos. Eventually, Norman, a Vanguard company employee who seemed to know his every move, took Victor captive and took the Phobos sample away from him. Chen, the security chief, was leaking information behind their backs. Luckily, Evelyn, the NSA chief of staff, caught him in the act. Chen was arrested and confessed to the location of the prison, where Victor was being held. But before they could make their next move, Chen was found murdered the day after Victor's rescue. It was as if someone was out to silence Chen's loose lips. Meanwhile, Lucia, the leader of the counter-terrorist team's Garcia naval fleet, was fighting a losing battle. Bad weather had cut off her fleet's supply, only for her to receive an urgent distress call from a supply ship. She rushed to the location, but it was tightly sealed and there was no sign of life inside. Though she had a bad feeling about it, she decided not to leave the ship unattended and docked it inside the base. Late that night, the outer walls of the supply ship were suddenly destroyed. The zombie attack had begun. The supply ship was loaded with containers with Kronos logo. Instead of supplies, they were filled with zombies. Uchiha fought her way through the zombies, pouring out of the supply ship to reach the inside, where a crustacean-shaped zombie had taken residence. After a fierce battle, Lucia defeated the zombie and set out to find out who was behind the incident, Pirate Michaela, who may have transported the Kronos supply containers. After escaping from the destroyed ship, Lucia and Enzo picked up a mysterious signal while investigating Kronos and headed to its location. They arrived at what appeared to be a normal harbor, only to find a massive base. Smells fishy, right? With the help of the pirate Raven, who had sent the signal, they entered and found signs of research and optical equipment and special weapons inside. This was Kronos' cover facility, researching the weapons of the otherworldly special agency, Overseer. This was also the place where Etheris and Axion, agents of the Overseer, had come to retrieve their weapons that Kronos had stolen. That aside, the two made their way through the harbor to a tower to find Kayla. However, they discovered something rather odd. The pirate weapon Megadalon had been provided by Kronos to defend the base and to attack intruders. Instead, it went out of control and attacked the pirates instead. Kronos had really sent the Megalodon to erase the pirates who had been on cleanup for Kronos. The base was destroyed and Michaela offered to work with Lucia to take down the Megalodon. The United Pirate Navy attack began. Kronos had a number of subsidiaries but no one outside of a few executives knew anything about the parent company due to its tight security. However, Dr. Soy, former chief researcher for Dr. Rex, had some inside information, and her pursuit of Kronos was enough to strike a nerve for the organization. They tried planting spies inside the lab to disrupt her plans. It was no news, as Dr. Soy had gathered her own trusted allies, building up her power in secret. Eventually, Kronos began to hunt down people who were most at risk of being tracked. Carlito, a Vanguard Company mercenary, was hired by Kronos to retrieve data from a specific facility. He and his team managed to infiltrate the facility, but something felt off. The interior was overrun by the zombies. And while they managed to deal with constant onslaught of monsters to retrieve the data, they were burdened with tedious tasks, problems like needing to go to the server room to transfer the data. It's as if someone was stalling for time. Nevertheless, 
Carlito's team successfully accomplished the mission and set off for their base. However, the joy of the victory did not last long. Vanguard Company was greeted by their base in flames. The base was on the brink of annihilation. Carlito and his team plunged into the fire to rescue the survivors, and before them appeared a savior, a Kronos helicopter. However, the relief of their survival quickly turned into despair as the helicopter launched missiles at them, killing most of the survivors they risked their lives to save. Carlito also lost one of his eyes. The Vanguard Company, who had done their dirty work for Kronos, was betrayed and abandoned by a man they trusted. After killing Kronos' agent Jay, who came to mop up the survivors, Carlito survived and vowed a bloody revenge on Douglas Jacob. Carlito heads to a nearby research facility that he hears is under attack, but arrives to find it already been destroyed by Kronos. With the help of Zim and Gerard, Carlito escapes Rizuka's attacks and decides to work with the two to take down their mutual enemy, Douglas Jacob. They plan to repair Zim's train, blaze and take it to raid Kronos' headquarters. However, a giant weapon appears and destroys Blaze, forcing them to retreat. After escaping from the panic room, Erika suffers from an unknown pain. Black contacts Dr. Soy and arranges to meet her at Dr. Rex's former laboratory, where equipment to treat her is located. However, Dr. Soy is nowhere to be found at the lab. Black learns from Dr. Soy's records that the place has been attacked by the zombies. He has to the central control room to find her, but the system mistakes him for an intruder and attacks him. He destroys the system and pursues Dr. Soy. Although Black and his team's location was compromised due to destroying the system, he was able to find Dr. Soy's travel route. The team follows it to a mall where they meet Gerard instead of Dr. Soy. Gerard tells them that Douglas Jacob is the one behind Erica's kidnapping and that they need to find Douglas Jacob to treat her, as all of the other facilities that could help were unavailable. During this process, they were attacked by Agent B who chased after Black, but they managed to escape unharmed. After learning about Douglas from Gerard, David Black decides to recruit the man who blew up the lab in the past. En route, he notices that Erica's pain has increased. They enter a munitions factory for a short break, unaware that Ritsuka is waiting for them. A crisis erupts, but with the help of Ellen and Dominic, Black and his team manage to escape. To find Yuri, the key figure behind the lab bombings, David Black meets the leader of the mercenary group, Queen, and hears about her past. Kidnapped and experimented on by Kronos in the past, Queen and Cyborg escaped by helicopter during the lab bombing, but crash landed due to the attack from their pursuers. In an ominous city full of neon lights, they were greeted by a swarm of zombies. As they ran from the monsters, Cyborg chose to sacrifice himself to save Queen. Thanks to him, Queen was able to escape from the city, but Cyborg was not. After telling him her story, Queen expressed her enmity towards Kronos and chose to join David Black. What happened to Rizuka after she failed to stop David Black yet again? Devastated, she returns to her home base only to find it in ruins. While she was away on her mission, the Asian Red Army was wiped out by Kronos. As she rushed inside, she saw members of her group being slaughtered by a giant beast. Enraged, Rizuka slayed the beast and fled the base. But the loss of the Asian Red Army, who had become like family to her, left her with nothing but a desire for revenge. Meanwhile, David Black received a radio call from someone who introduced herself as Yuri. She asks him to destroy a secret area of Kronos in exchange for her joining them. David Black couldn't leave sick Erica alone, so he asked Alan and Dominic to go. Once inside, they were confronted by a vengeful Ritsuka. She attacked Alan and Dominic for interfering her with their plans, but was no match for the two. They also ran into Mei, who was on Yuri's trail, and handed Ritsuka over to her. Mei convinced Rizuka to join them in their quest to avenge the Asian Red Army. In the meantime, Ellen and Dominic destroyed the secret area they were asked to, but in the aftermath of the blast, space-time warped. Sent to another dimension, they found a strange village where they discovered and defeated a giant beast that had been sealed away. Douglas Jacob had been working on a new piece of technology based on overseer tech. Helping him were the elves Medea and Nyx, who sought a way to return to the other world. Jacob's plans were foiled by Yuri, who discovered the secret. 
With the destruction of the secret facility, Douglas's plan comes to light and Kronos is under investigation from the government. Furthermore, Ritsuka, persuaded by Mei to join the team, reveals the truth. Countries and people who had been friendly to Douglas Jacob turned against him. Douglas was branded as a criminal and hunted by all, with even Nyx turning her back on him. Unaware of his mountain bad karma, Douglas Jacob decides to take revenge on the world. His first move, attacking the Aegis Institute and releasing the virus he's been working on to unleash new zombies on the surface. Dr. Soy and Jennifer took it upon themselves to defend the lab, defeating Douglas's zombies to retake it. A group of people, each with their own goals, began to assemble to stop Douglas Jacob's twisted ambitions. Did you enjoy the zombie scenario stories up to the first story of season 9? If you want to hear more about the story and how the characters interact, find out by playing zombie scenario mode. Stay tuned for more scenarios to come. Thank you for watching.